What was the tipping point of your last relationship? Story one. He kept treating his dance partner better than me. Would take her out for drinks to try she hadn't before. Took her shopping with him. Post photos of her online, etc. But wouldn't hold my hand in public. Nothing about me on social media whatsoever. Totes fine. But if you go on and on about how great your dance partner is and making it seem like your girlfriend doesn't exist, it doesn't feel great, etc. I have no issue with female friends or dance partners, but don't pay for dinner and drinks with them and then have your girlfriend pays for every single date night. I dropped $1.70 for a movie night, $1.40 of which were his drinks. Dude still hits me up whining about how we could have worked out, how he misses my cat, etc. I dumped him over a year ago. Story 2. We moved into a house together and things were a little on the rocks, but I figured I could work a little harder and she would too. I had my doubts as she was a control bad person and really only took what I said about things at face value. Really saw that later on after we split. We had a huge fight about the living room paint color. She said it was just awful and couldn't put up with it. We went round and round about it for a week or so until I finally just decided I could concede on this one, but that I got to choose the bedroom color. She described it as a cream color, but like adding too much creamer to coffee. Disgusted was her word for it, I want to say. Anywho, I'm standing in the paint aisle on my day off and utterly exhausted from a week of work and remodeling. I'm dead peach tired and she's combing through the paint swatches. She finds the color and we get it mixed. We end up in an argument in the car as I'm opting for bed and she wants to paint. I told her it is better to do it during the day so we can open the windows and let it air out better. It was currently raining and I didn't want watermarks. It escalated and grew until she finally just got so pissed that she left. I decided to be nice and start painting the opposing window wall to at least show her I heard her thoughts. I got it all mixed up and dipped the roller. Rolled over once and it all hit me at the exact same time. I was sick of her and her controlling attitude. I was done feeling like a peach for things I didn't do wrong. I was tired of living her dream life. You know why it hit me? That paint was the exact same oh no color as the wall. Story 3. Things had been going downhill for a long time, and we ended up in marriage counseling, which was actually what did us in. Sitting in a room with her refusing to listen to me and her own counselor about things going on in our relationship really clued me in to fact that things weren't going to get better. Story 4. He and I had this moment, lying on the bed, listening to some music in my room while the sun was setting, the city buzzing away below us after a long day and I felt this wholesome feeling, like I knew where I belonged. And right then and there, he looks at me and said, If you ever leave me, I'm going to make your life a flipping hell. Guess I belonged far, far away from him. Edit. As to whether he actually fulfilled his promise, the breakup was ugly, as expected, and painful. We did love each other at some point, but it was the right thing to do, as I was unhappy and could not see a future together. During the breakup, he changed from begging me to stay to calling me every name in the book, threatening, etc., and in the year after, he continued to write emails from different email accounts he created, even under my name. That was flipping weird. To stay true to his words, I didn't read most of them, and at some point he stopped. My life after the breakup was beautiful, tough, like a huge burden had lifted. So I guess no, but he tried. Story 5. A few weeks after we started dating, I caught a really bad sickness. I was lying in bed and coughing for days. The entire time she brought me soup and a steady supply of cough drops and tissues. This might seem small, but oh, think it set the tone of our relationship, and I'll always remember that. We have been together for three years going strong. Story 6. When she finally started to sober up from the year's worth of prescription meds and immediately said, I don't want to be married anymore. Edit. It's been requested that ages be given to provide some context. In my case, the divorce was about 10 years ago. We married at 25, divorced at 29. We had about six good months between the wedding and her ailments presenting. Two years of ever more potent prescription medication. A brief period of sobering up, then close to two years of separation leading to the divorce. Story 7. Month after month after month, excuses why he couldn't pay rent. And yet he would spend all his income on eating out, online gaming memberships, etc. Would also try to guilt trip me into getting him stuff constantly. One day we went to visit relatives in another state during the week before Xmas and my uncle snapped. He told him off about how he's manipulative and can see that what he does has dragged me down as a serious burden. I didn't attempt to intervene. He was absolutely right. And after we left, X me out for not stepping up for him. We broke up the day after and suddenly I felt like I could breathe again. Story 8. Turns out my ex kept a cat locked in the attic for several years, changed the litter boxes about once a month and gave her food water every couple of days. He didn't really give a cow about her. He didn't have AC, so when I went up to check on her, I was pouring sweat and had to leave within five minutes. I confronted him about her treatment and got the response, It's just a cat. I don't know why he even had her in the first place. I told him the next week that I was taking her to give her a better home, and he pretty much said do whatever. Once again, she's just a cat. 
She's 20 years old now and lives with me. She was hesitant of any signs of affection at first, but is now the sweetest thing. Oh, also, he was seeing someone else while we were still together. I was struggling with some mental issues, and he told me to go fix myself, but that's another story. Update. For those asking, this is a picture of Ali. I'm trying to upload another picture of her, but it's not going so well currently. Story 9. He was going out during the night to see two other girls. Two. And when I saw him during the morning, he would be tired as hell, because obviously he was out, and tell me he had sleeping issues. I found out he was cheating on me with the two girls when they both saw me hugging him and went to scream at me. For the karma part, the three of us agreed to leave him and not talk to him again. And I'm still a friend with one of them. Story 10. We went to a new country for both of us. Netherlands. I'm Portuguese. She's Polish. I got a job. She didn't. She became pissed and started stressing. I got a better job. She got an average one. Stress continued. So, in order to get an even better job, she applied to work in another country. Italy. Got accepted and soon our relationship was over. Story 11. We were doing long distance and had been having problems for a long time and had been trying to work through them, or staying together despite how overdue a breakup was, whichever. Anyways, I flew home to visit him for his B-day and felt like I was going to have a panic attack the whole time I was there. We had some fun and didn't fight a ton, but I was super tense. Finally, I get back and it just felt like such a relief. A couple months later, he was just about to visit me and we got in a fight and he threatened to cancel his trip and not come, something he did frequently when he visited. At first, I argued against the idea, but then actually considered it and realized what a weight off it was. Story 12. She would threaten me with physical violence and self-harm for years if I ever left her. I was made to choose between my friends or her. Certain threats made if I'd choose friends over her, etc. Having to be in contact with her at all times if I wasn't with her. Going through my phone and years of messages with my closest friends whilst I'm asleep, etc. Deciding who I could follow on Instagram. Be friends with on Facebook based off how attractive they were or if she deemed them as a threat, etc. Even if they were long-term friends. Makes me feel sick thinking about it all again. Crazy cow. I was younger and didn't realize how abusive she really was. Lost a lot of friends because of her. She eventually did another one of her fake breakups. And I decided not to crawl back to the person that would always tell me that no one else would ever love me, etc. Said, okay, I'll pick up my stuff tomorrow or something along those lines. And then she obviously freaked out realizing I wasn't falling for her tricks and playing into her usual games. Haven't seen or heard from her in four years now. Edit. Added a few more details. Story 13. We went on a trip to Boston together. She had kids, so this was our first chance to get away together. Just the two of us. We were at a Red Sox game and I noticed she was acting strange, being quiet and distant. Normally, she was always a bubbly happy person. For the rest of the trip, she just shut down and was no longer present. She wouldn't talk about what was bothering her. The next day after getting home, we talked on the phone and I finally got it out of her that it was over. Found out later from a mutual friend that I bored her and she only realized it when we finally spent an extended period of time together. Story 14. She just kept getting drunk and going crazy. I had to call the police on her because she took a bunch of pills when I left during one of her binges. She would call me at night often, drunk as hell and yell at me, and then threaten to herself when I refused to come over at one in the morning. She still drinks to this day. Story 15. We had been together for five years. She started dating someone else for the last five months of our relationship. I work night shift as a police officer, and I only found out because I realized I left something at home when I left for work and went home to get it around midnight. And this random guy was sleeping in my bed, and my girlfriend was nowhere to be found. She was making a run to Walgreens. Story 16. First wife, and this is in total retrospect. She was the one who finally bailed due to her mental health issues. The scary part was that she my dog because she did not like him. I heard later, she her next husband's dog because it got out of the yard while she was late for work and didn't have time to chase it. Both husband and I just concluded we were both lucky we got out of relationships with her alive. Story 17. At a food festival, standing in line for like 10 minutes for some French toast thing. He ordered first and got his food. But when it was my turn, I realized it was cash only. But I only had my debit card. He turned to me and basically yelled, Wow, what are you going to do? After being together for 10 months, cohabitating and splitting everything 5050 even though his salary was double mine, he wasn't willing to spot me $5 for French toast, and he had to call attention to it loudly in front of the whole line. Then we walked away from the vendor with him chomping down on his French toast and me empty-handed. It seems trivial, but if I had just stood in line with someone I love or even a good friend, I would have just covered them. It gave me the impression that he would never really have my back. I could never see him the same after that, and we broke up the next month. Story 18. Got really sick last March out of nowhere, and doctors initially thought it could have been colon cancer. I was only 23, so this obviously had me shaken to my core. 
They expedited everything, and a week after I first went in for my symptoms, I was getting put under for them to take a closer look and get biopsies. Girlfriend knew what time the procedure was and roughly how long it would last. When I came to, I turned my phone on and was blown up from friends all over the U.S. and the world, so middle of the night for them, asking me what the results were and how I was doing. No text from girlfriend. About an hour later, she texted me saying, Are you flipping serious? And I asked what she was talking about. She responded that someone dinged her car door at work. I didn't respond. She then asked me how the procedure went and what the results were. She knew I was upset and said she figured I'd just tell her later. With my symptoms, the doctors told us if it was colon cancer, it would have to be pretty bad at this point. But yet she was fine with waiting an entire day to hear how I was. Luckily, it wasn't cancer. I broke up with her not long after. Story 19. My current husband. We had begun casually dating. I liked him, he liked me. But he chewed dip, drove a hoopty pickup truck, and loved country music. Me, I smoked cigarettes, drove a Honda two-door, and loved rock and punk music. I had mentioned one time how I loved to collect rocks from all over. I had a small collection in my house and around my garden. One night, late, he showed up with a huge rock in the back of his truck. It was an amazing coral rock. He said, I got this for you because you didn't have one like this. I found it where I play horseshoes with my friends. I think I've lost two friends and a testicle loading this. But here you go. Together, we rolled it off his truck. It's now the centerpiece of our backyard. We've been married 17 years now, and yes, he got laid that night. Story 20. He choked on a burrito. No one could do the Heimlich on him. He passed out and almost passed away. I was at the hospital, and while they were clearing out the burrito that he aspirated, a nurse handed me his clothes, including the pants he cow in when he had passed out and lost consciousness and control of his bowels for a few minutes due to suffocation. I took them home and washed them without blinking. We've been married for two years now. Edit. Oh! Thanks for the shiny silver. Story 21. It had been a short, rocky, abusive relationship. She had been physically fighting me, and one time in particular, she had bit a huge chunk of my arm out. She spit it out like a sunflower seed shell and smiled all creepy, and her teeth were tinted with my blood. I knew then that there was absolutely no help for this relationship, and I was 100% disgusted and no longer loved this person. Story 22. There was no tipping point. The whole table was just pulled out from under me. It was just suddenly... There's another woman. I've been seeing her this past month when I tell you I'm going to my dad's. I'm staying with her and leaving you. Get out of my house. The other woman was his dad's girlfriend's sister, almost twice his age, with two kids. He was mid-twenties. We'd been together the better part of a decade and living together for five years. It was very strange and very sudden. This was nearly five years ago. A fake they're still together edit. Since everyone seems to be focused on my tenancy at his place, he essentially inherited the place and paid all of the necessary monthly dues, etc. I did not contribute to these expenses due to long-term illness, and he did not charge me rent. I was never on any paperwork, and even if I had been, I still would have just up and left. Story 23. Seven hours before I had a big test, she wanted to argue. There was no not arguing with her. If you stayed quiet, she kept going. If you disagreed, she kept going. If you took her side, you were lying. Two hours into the fight, I tried to ignore her and go to bed. She told me to admit we're through. Might this be a way out? I said yes. She started questioning if I was serious, so I had to lay it out. Yes, we're done. I'm sick of this. We are done. We're over. You're moving. We're done. Now go pretend to sleep on the couch for 15 minutes before you coming back in here and yelling more about how I didn't come rescue you from the couch. Yes. I know you that well, and I'm sick of all your BS. Go sleep in your flipping car. I don't care. We are 100% done. I'm going to sleep before you ruin my final tomorrow. We are done. Edit. I could insert a classic fudge you Karen type comment, but I won't. My ex had many legit problems in life that I hope she was able to work out. Maybe she learned something from losing me. Story 24. I realized that I haven't physically bought my own boxers in over five years. When I asked her, she said, of course I check and throw out the ones that you can see through. I then realized the same thing for many household items like toothpaste, ketchup, toilet paper, etc. She'd already made our house, a home. I'm two kids deep into it now after getting married. Story 25. First Christmas at my parents' house, and he embraced my mom's matching Christmas pajamas tradition. The theme was a very Potter Christmas. Everyone got pajamas to represent their Hogwarts house. So he and my mom ended up in matching Hufflepuff pajamas and took loads of cute pictures together while drinking giant glasses of wine. In that moment, I knew he was a permanent part of the family. Story 26. The FBI woke me up from a peaceful slumber at 6 a.m. on a Friday, so got taken away in handcuffs for, you guessed it, possession of illegal. I was very glad we hadn't had close relationship in 10 months. I had known it was over, but it took this for me to truly see them as they were.
not who I wish they were. Good riddance. I'm much happier now. Story 27. He kept comparing me to random girls that he knew, as well as random girls on the street. He whined and complained a lot, so I felt like a mom instead of a girlfriend. Also, he kept trying to give me fashion advice that led me to believe he was looking for a much kinkier girl than I am. Story 28. I was planning saving for my very first vacation after a hard-earned promotion, and he wasn't saving anything, or really caring. I realized I'd have an unenthusiastic lump tagging along on something really important to me. I knew deep down he'd sour the entire experience, so I ended it. A lot of other issues going on as well, but this made it crystal clear. I actually had a voice in my head say, he'll ruin it. Story 29. She wasn't a very social person and didn't get along with people. I took her to a Thanksgiving family gathering, and at one point, a little cousin of mine walked past her, and she mentioned out loud that she hates that little girl and how annoying she is. In front of that little girl's sister who was sitting right there in front of her, she was just very rude and had no social awareness. Sorry, family comes first, and even though I don't like some people, I don't say it in front of everybody and be rude about it. Story 30. He was an angry, emotionally abusive person. Of course, our relationship didn't start that way. But once it gets to its max, holy cow, you're in boiling water that you didn't even realize was heating up. We were engaged and I kept putting off wedding planning. One day I came home and we started talking about kids. I've never felt that I really wanted to have children, but more thought of it as a thing I might do if my spouse wanted them. Well, he started talking about it and I realized I never, ever want to have your child. I examined that. Why? Because I was absolutely miserable and it had happened so subtly I didn't realize it. But hearing him talk about our future children made me realize that this person made me so miserable, I couldn't even stand to think about our future together. I moved out that night, six years later, happily married to another person, happily child-free. No regrets. It was the best decision I've ever made. Edit. The emotionally abusive thing and also he wore brown shoes with pants. What a monster. Story 31. She started dating someone else and someone else told me so. I asked that guy because she just stopped sending me messages and didn't answer my calls for a week. We were far from each other because of my studies, so that was our only way to keep in touch. When I sent her a message about that, she told me it was true and that she was waiting for the good moment to tell me. Not the best end for a relationship, to be honest. Story 32. A half gallon of milk. I got a text asking me to get some milk on my way home from my girlfriend at the time. So I stopped at a local dairy store and got a half gallon of whole milk. She spent the next week nagging me about how I didn't get 2%. It got posted to Facebook. It got told as an A, look how stupid he is anecdote to her friends. I realized I didn't need that, and by extension her in my life. I'm single now with zero regrets. All my female friends thought it was an overreaction. I truly feel that if the roles had been flipped, I'd have been torn apart by people that thought her doing it to me was funny. Story 33. I realized I was a doormat going nowhere. We were together 45 years since high school, and I did absolutely everything for him, as he was a not-romantic neat who couldn't leave the bedroom. I'm not kidding. We lived with my parents for two years, and he talked to my parents maybe five times all up. If I didn't bring him food, he didn't eat, and it was my fault. Also, we didn't have close relationship for months on end, and when we did, he absolutely hated it, which was a huge blow to my self-esteem. If I accepted a longer shift at work, I'd come home sore and exhausted just for him to get mad at me for making him starve. For most of the time living together, he didn't have an income. He was later put on unemployment. So I paid rent for the both of us. Once he got unemployment payments, he wouldn't let me touch any of it. I'm talking if I asked for $20 for groceries, he'd get pissed at me for spending all his money. Anytime we argued, he'd go silent for days. Like no matter what the situation was, I'd end up apologizing because I couldn't take the isolation in my own bedroom. And then he wouldn't talk until he felt like it, which could have been days later. I started getting depressed about it all thinking I was going to have to spend the rest of my life with him or else he'd terminate himself and how trapped I felt. The tipping point was when I felt like I could make him proud. He never complimented me. If I put on a cute dress and said, how do I look? I'd get back, I don't know, on a good day or stop asking me on a cow one by combining his two favorite foods. I made pizza dough from scratch and waited for it to rise, made a dope peach mac and cheese, then combined those bad boys. It tasted absolutely flipping amazing. I took my creation to him and he didn't even taste it. He took one look and said, I'm not eating that. It looks disgusting. So when I told him I spent hours making it, he just said, then you eat it. I'm not touching that cow. That's when I knew there was absolutely no hope for us anymore. Story 34. I came home from work and everything had been moved and or shifted. Nothing was where I had left it. I didn't even ask and she had made my bed, folded my laundry, put my nonsense away, washed my dishes, and basically just cleaned my place. 
We got married a year later. I know it's not much, but I was touched that someone would do that for me. People talk about love languages, and I guess I learned that day that acts of service was mine. Story 35. When he gave me an eye whilst I was struggling to get away from him. When he was attempting to tie me up so I could watch him commit suicide. Bonus points for knowing I found my previous partner dead of suicide. And extra bonus points for abandoning me in a country halfway across the world from my home. Two weeks on Holy Cow. I forgot what it was like to not be hanging out with a miserable pose all the time. Story 36. I posted this a while back. So here you go. Our relationship had been deteriorating for some time. And to make a long story short, during the beginning of our junior year in college, she broke up with me one night after being upset that I didn't invite her to a party. The thing is, she had known for over two years at that point that there is a party at my rugby team's house literally every Saturday night. And she was regularly there almost every week for the past two years without needing some sort of invitation from myself. And being that I'd passed out from drunkenness before four in the evening, I wasn't really up and at it at that time. Regardless of any of the details, she came into my room where I was passed and started yelling about how we were done. She grabbed my keychain and took the key that opened the back door to her house and left. Me being kind of fed up to begin with at this point kind of shook it off and determined that it was probably the best for both of us. The next day, I went on with my life as a person who was no longer in a relationship. Apparently, this wasn't the case for her, though, and she was expecting that I would come back and apologize and try to get her back. About 24 hours after she told me we were done, she came to my house and came upstairs to where me and a few of my teammates, including a few who were in their first two weeks of college, were just hanging out. She, visibly drunk at this point, started yelling at me. So we went out in the hallway and I simply said that she had broken up with me the day before. She stormed downstairs and I assumed left the house and went back to my teammates. Moments later, we heard a huge crash from downstairs. So I went downstairs and saw her throwing and turning over everything on the first floor of my house. I had zero idea how to deal with this, so I kind of just stood there in awe. There wasn't a single thing that wasn't nailed down that she hadn't thrown across the room. It was the most efficient storm of cow throwing I've ever seen. Story 37. Two months after my 17-year-year-old son passed away in a car crash, he told me his death was my fault because I'm such a bad person. Then, six months after that, I don't even remember what we were arguing about, but it was heated. I'm sure I mentioned to him how awful I thought he was to have said that about my son. He went into the kitchen and made himself a plate of food for dinner. I was cleaning up my things in the house, and he saw me, and to tell you the truth, I don't even know what triggered him. He threw his plate of food on the ground. Upon seeing this, I about faced and headed to our master bathroom. While I was trying to lock the door, he burst it open, hitting me in the arm and head, knocking me down. He froze. I got up and locked myself into the water closet and sat on the toilet completely paralyzed with fear. Trapped. No phone. He tried to break the door down. All the while, in my most calm voice, I told him, This has escalated rapidly. If you break the door down, there is evidence for the police that you got violent with me. Just leave the room. I will quietly leave the house for the weekend. Nope. I saw his hands reach underneath the door as he tried to pry it open that way. Well, Cal, what do I do now? No time to think. He picked the lock and opened the door. I about cow my pants in fear. He picked me up by the arm and tried to embrace me, saying how sorry he was. I walked away from him, packed a suitcase, and went to a hotel for the weekend. When people ask me why I left him, I just say, he crossed that one line. And that's all you need to know. Story 38. He didn't like that I was on Reddit. The last ridiculous straw that broke the emotionally abused camel's back. Edit. Thank you, kind stranger, for the gold. My first ever. Some more context. This was after eight years of continuous abuse and after he had me off from all of my friends and the rest of the world. I couldn't go anywhere or do anything without him, and I wasn't allowed to have any social media. He honestly just didn't like that I was communicating with other people. Once I realized we were two hours into a screaming match about something so absurd, I kind of just snapped out of it somehow. So, I guess, thank you, Reddit, for freeing me. Story 39. She blamed me for getting assaulted and cried victim. Not in a, oh, she kind of did it as a miscommunication. She outright told me I should have screamed or ran away. I don't want to go into the details on how I was assaulted, but it was pretty bad and the person threatened to terminate me at one point. Nothing was the same after that. She told all her friends I cheated on her. We broke up a few weeks later. Story 40. He stopped asking me to go out with him when he performed at bars in our city. I always attended out-of-town shows. Turns out he was cheating on with a doctor. Image meant a lot to this guy and the choice between a retail manager or a doctor wasn't really a choice at all. Oh well, story 41. My now ex-boyfriend, 26 and I, 19, had my best friend over for dinner. While the food was cooking, we were all talking, laughing, having a good time. This jerk decides that it's the best time to start whining that I refuse to give him the password to my laptop.
that I don't trust him and that there's no reason he shouldn't have it since we live together. I had explained several times before this day that I don't feel comfortable giving it to him. I let him use it whenever he asked and didn't care if he'd grab it while it was unlocked. I just didn't feel comfortable with him having the password to my property. He starts implying that I'm cheating on him, getting louder and more angry. Up until this point, I knew he had an anger issue. When he got pissed, he'd start slamming the cabinet doors and yelling about things that he'd later say he wasn't angry about, then try to pressure me into having close relationship, saying he'd be less angry if I gave in. I have issue letting someone touch my genitals, stemming from being as a child, which I'd told him about long before we moved in together. He said he was fine with it, and I thought he was being truthful. So he's now almost yelling at me in front of my friend, who is just standing there looking completely uncomfortable. I'm horribly embarrassed and just want him to stop before he started slamming things like a toddler in full tantrum mode. So I took him into the garage and told him the password. He suddenly got all happy and we went back inside, had a relatively nice dinner, and ended the evening. I want to say I confronted him about it, but I don't think I did. I tried to leave a short time later, but he broke down crying, got on his knees, and begged me to stay. So I reluctantly stayed. After that, I started to recognize some of the things he was doing as abuse. It was all downhill from there. The night I left, he'd hurt my dog threw something at me, missed, and flipped the couch. Story 42. There was a moment when we were on the eight-hour car drive home the day after my brother's wedding that Perfect by Ed Sheeran came on, and the song actually spoke to me. I pictured myself being in the song with this girl who was everything somebody could ask for out of a person. Then she started singing along to it, and I could not help myself from tearing up. She's driving and grabs my hand but doesn't stop singing. I'm doing everything I can not to bawl my eyes out, but I'm so overcome by emotions. That was the tipping point I had found who I wanted to marry. Story 43. This girl would only ride in the backseat of my car when we went places together. I thought it was funny and cute the first couple times, but one morning we were going to go to breakfast and I asked her to ride in the front. Parking is right in front of the restaurant, so I didn't want it to look weird, like I was her Uber driver coming in to eat with her. She refused, so I said I was going to walk. I left and went to the restaurant and sat down. Got a text asking if I was serious to which I replied with a picture of my pancakes. I told her it just wasn't working out and that was that. Edit. Relevant details I left out. My car at the time was a two-door, meaning I'd have to go around and let her out every time too. We had only been dating for two weeks and amongst some other weird things I decided it was better not to get deeper involved. Story 44. I recently moved in with a guy who had moved across the country to make a go of it with me. We weren't really in love but I think we both thought maybe we should give it a... I don't really know what we were both thinking, as we were in our mid-late 20s, but just hadn't given much thought of a future together. He kind of wanted to get out of his town, and I guess I wanted to be in love with someone. After about a month, we were sitting outside together. I don't remember at all what we were talking about. We weren't fighting at all, just shooting the cow. But for some reason, I said to him, If you ever leave me, I want you to do me a favor. Wait till I'm at work, pack your cow up, drive away, and don't ever look back. I knew deep down it wasn't working out, but... It was said in kind of a kidding, not kidding sort of way. A few days later, that's exactly what he did. It was the best thing he ever did for me. A year or two later, I met my husband and have never been so grateful to be dumped. Story 45. My first serious boyfriend cheated on me with a female friend. She was a friend of his that he'd met only two months before the end of our relationship and a mild acquaintance of mine since I wasn't blind to how much he wanted to get in her pants from the start. Two years later, I dated the guy who was my first BF's best friend when I had been dating him. He ended up cheating on me with the same chick. They'd meet up for lunch or dinner and he'd lie about where he was going. They made plans to go to cons out of town and he'd tell me he was going with his dad. I calmly and politely told him I wasn't okay with him sneaking around with her, but let it slide multiple times until her little henchman sewer rat that couldn't survive without her nose being stuck up the chick's peach decided to sabotage me. She had a herd of her friends write bad reviews for my business. They wrote fake stories about me humiliated me by posting very personal information that they could have only gotten from my boyfriend, telling their friend who was cheating with him, and the final straw wasn't even my boyfriend, not standing up for me, or even bothering to talk to these women about their behavior. It was me coming home early to the sewer rat henchman, and my boyfriend sitting at his computer with their legs overlapping. Done. Story 46. Dating ex-wife, things were tense. She was being super clingy. I was a student and worked in a lab. She kept demanding that I be around, miss work, skip class, not do work to make my grades. Finally, end of term comes, and I'm super behind and pull three all-nighters in a row, churn out weeks worth of missed work, and had to rinse and repeat that for the last three weeks of term. Finals week, and I'm doing the last of my studio work for an art class, cranking stuff out. 3 a.m., she shows up at the studio, demanding to be let in. 
If you were a student with after-hours access, you couldn't let non-class participants in the building. It could be a suspension or automatic failure of the class. I went outside, trying to talk her down. She started pitching a fit, literally jumping up and down and screaming, sobbing, that I had to come back to the apartment and spend the night. Campus police showed up and gave her the choice to GTFO or go to uni jail until the morning. She went on a vacay with her folks. I was supposed to go along, but I asked my boss to call and leave me a message on my answering machine saying I had to cover for someone and that my job depended on it. I checked the message. Yes, it was an answering machine. It was the 90s. And she heard it and told me I should quit my job to go on the trip. I refused. They left and it was like a vacation, just not having to worry about keeping her happy. I knew it was over. She was supposed to be back on Sunday, but convinced her folks to come back a day early. I was out at the state park, MTN biking, and when I got back to my apt, there were 60 messaged on my machine that went from, hey, we're back, to, where are you, you suck, I'm heartbroken. All the calls were in a three-hour time frame. I went over and broke up with her. So I'm stupid. A year and a half later, she had chilled out. She had issues with endometriosis and ovarian cysts and got on BC. It was like she was a different person. We got back together, married, had a kid. She got a bad case of postpartum. Things got weird. She woke up one day and it was like I was the reason for all the bad things in the world. I tried to get her to go to counseling. My kid was about to turn three and I'm struggling to work it out with her. She kept refusing to go to family counseling. All of a sudden, she wants to know how to change her password on her email and her computer. Come to find out, she has a secret account and is chatting up some dude from out of town. I tried to get an intervention-like thing with her parents. No go. We split and a year later, dude moves to our state and I just let it go. Equal sign, equal sign, equal sign, equal sign, equal sign. Four years later, I meet a girl. We start dating. After a couple of months, we decide to give cohabitation a go. Come to find out she has way more resources than I do. She throws down a gigantic deposit on a huge house that I can't afford my 14 of. We have a talk about that. She convinces me that it was just some cash she had from real estate deal. It was the last two years leading up to the crash. Seemed plausible. I get invested with her in the house. Contract protected me as long as she got anything back from the lease to purchase deal we had. She had put over $250K down on this $700K house. Who walks away from 250 k A crazy person, bent on crippling you financially so you're dependent. That's who. She gets me stuck. I lose all my savings. Makes me choose to move to another state with her or be homeless. I go with her just to get some breathing room to figure things out. I lose my job due to massive layoffs. Three, four, six months go by and I still have no job. I'm nearly completely out of money and state unemployment is being weird about my benefits. I eventually get those straightened out. She wants stuff remodeled on her house in the other state. She's buying trips and taking me and my kid to California, going to Disney, other states, going to all these fabulous places, but treating me and the kid kind of poorly, and it gets worse, more demanding, and more abusive. Finally, we go to Disney World and FL. She has a cow fit come apart and starts screaming and yelling at my then eight-year-old kid. He feels horrible and basically shuts down for the rest of the day, won't talk, will barely eat. I confront her and try to intervene, and she threatens to strand us 800 miles from home sell our airfare, and kick us out of the hotel. We get back, and I've been stocking cash from my unemployment that was being direct deposited in an account she didn't know about. She starts going out of town for a job she decided she wanted, she really didn't need to work, and leaving me cash to buy the stuff for the renovations and money to live on. I basically go on to the healthiest diet I can for $7 a day and save the rest. Anytime I could return something, or if I had overage, I would return it and stockpile the cash. The last week she's gone. I finish all the work, store all my stuff in a local storage facility and call the cops to be at the door at a certain time that Friday. Luckily, the plane is on time. We get back to her place. She figures out something is up when all my stuff is gone out of the garage. First, she starts pleading with me, telling me she'll write me a check if I marry her, buy my kid's college, a car when he turns 16, take care of everything we ever need. She shows me statements from multiple accounts that totaled over $40 million. When I refuse, she threatens that if I leave, she'll throw herself down the stairs and report me for abuse. I open the door and there's the city's finest, waiting. I point out to the cop that she's in perfect condition. Get in my car and preparing to drive off. She throws her Panasonic tough book so hard, it hits the wheel on my truck and it shatters. Shatters. I've seen these things dropped from 20 feet and survive. She proceeds to yell and scream, lunging over the cop car and takes a half swing at the cop. He gives her the choice of going inside or going to jail. Cop follows me off to the interstate and pulls me over. Comes up to the truck and said, Dude, when I got this call, I said to myself, What kind of cat can't just break up with a girl? But man, you did the right thing. That bee is crazy. 
I ain't never seen anything like that. A cop in a major U.S. metropolitan city? A major U.S. The shenanigans continued for a few weeks until I finally changed my phone number. Story 47. My substance enthusiasm recently made a strong resurgence, to the point it outweighed my desire to hang out with her two weekends in a row. I realized I'm a total piece of cow, don't deserve her, was dragging her down and likely to screw up her life as well as mine. So I broke it off. Up date. Interesting almost year. I've been mostly sober for the past four months, which looks like having gone out for drinks maybe three or four times since October. The only time said drinks got relatively minimally excessive was on New Year's. I very much regretted the hangover the next day. My only real candy intake has been smoking the a handful of times since October as well. My relationship is intact. Some extremely important friendships I burned to the ground over the years are beginning to be rebuilt. And I'm realizing exactly how dangerously close I was getting to becoming a full-on addict. Specifically, a non-functioning alcoholic with a zeal for expensive stimulants. At this point, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to navigate the rest of my life, the considerations of which have a sort of complex kind of calculus to them. Wanted to say thanks for all the input on here. A lot of it was very insightful and helpful. Story 48. His friend passed away and he showed no sadness. He shrugged his shoulders and went, Hey, people pass away. Did you like him or something? This was the guy he enthusiastically introduced me to as his brother. I thought really critically about him then and realized that he had already become pretty abusive towards me. It's like this incident opened my eyes to what was happening to me. The constant negging and jabs at my weight when he was fatter than me. The assault that would happen consistently. But he'd convinced me it wasn't anything because he wasn't hurting me. He was just laying on me with all of his weight and wouldn't get up until I stopped fighting him. Even when I couldn't breathe. Story 49. 1. The phone addiction. He admitted it as well. I felt legit ignored in favor of the phone. 2. He told me that I can fudge other men, which frankly made me feel disrespected. 3. Secrets. Many secrets. I understand in a relationship there has to be some level of privacy, but it was just too much. Story 50. We went to her grandmother's house the night before Christmas Eve, and she was an immature brat. Throwing cow at her brother, screaming you at her parents, kissing, that kind of cow. That was the last time she saw me. Last I heard, she popped her kneecap dancing to a K-pop boy band playing at the New York New Year's Eve party. I didn't even like her that much. My friends set me up with her. Remember, kids, if you're hesitant about dating someone, then you should probably go with your gut. Edit. I once witnessed her grab a pool stick, chase her brother upstairs, and jab the living fudge out of him with it. That should have been the first red flag. Story 51. I lost my virginity to him. Immediately afterwards, he started acting strange. I asked him if he had told his family about me yet. We had been together for over three months. He said no. So I said, do you think you love me? Kind of expecting a yes because he was the first one to say, I love you. His answer, I don't know. We had a long conversation. And after that, we met up one more time, cuddled, and never met up again because he ghosted. Months and months later, he starts messaging me again, and I turned him down. Story 52. I was laying in bed with her while she slept, and I realized that I couldn't remember what life was like without her. Her presence felt as natural as dot 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 instinct. Coexistence had simply turned into existence, and all I saw ahead was a future tied beautifully to hers. The wedding is this August. Story 53. Finally, I have a great answer to one of these. When she got angry, drunk, and high, and drove around for hours in a flood storm, and then broke down the door to my apartment in a candy-induced rage. I called the police while she was breaking the door down, and she damaged her wrist while punching the door. When the police came, she said that I assaulted her, wrist, with the door somehow, but that she didn't want to press charges. She said it was so that she didn't get committed again. The policeman said that we'd be back together the next day. Uh, no. Story 54. I was married for 11 years, and the last couple of them, I had suspected he was cheating. I'm not going to bore you all with the details and skip to the tipping point. Valentine's Day of 2011, he called and said he had to work late so we wouldn't be able to go to dinner as planned. I was crushed but accepted it and stayed in with our two small sons and watched The Lion King. The next morning, we're getting ready for work, and he asked me to go into his car and retrieve his iPod so he could charge it a little before leaving for the day. I went into his car and didn't immediately see it anywhere, so I searched, and when I reached into the pocket on the back of the passenger seat, I found a Valentine's Day card from a woman. I walked back in and just held it up and he went totally pale. He didn't even argue, just walked out the door. I moved out to my sister's house that day and filed for divorce the following week. Edit to add, I've dated here and there, but haven't gotten serious. I'm not gun-shy or angry at men. I just felt improving myself and being a mother to my sons is what I wanted to do. Second edit, thank you kind stranger for the silver. My first ever as I'm still a newbie around these parts. You truly made my night as did everyone else that replied with well wishes and their own experiences, added again for silver.
I'm literally typing through tears. I wish I had come to Reddit sooner, because some of the best people alive are here. Thank you again. My heart is bursting right now. Three silvers in one day? Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's the little things that matter. I don't know how to express my love and gratitude to all of you. I just got my first silvers and now gold. Not to mention all the support through comments. I feel humbled and I feel as though I need go pay it forward. I've been trying to keep up with all the comments and I hope I did well. If I didn't reply to you, please know that I'm not ignoring you. I'm just overwhelmed with all the love and support. That includes those that blame me for the demise of my marriage. I don't harbor any resentment or anger. Also, thank you for the platinum, strangers. I'll put those coins to good use. Story 55. Let her borrow my car so she could meet up with friends at the bars. We'd been on the rocks for a bit, but the town was notorious for girls getting assaulted, and she would have walked across town otherwise. Her phone passed away and she didn't tell me where she was crashing that night, but I already knew. Caught a ride the next morning to the house of a male co-worker I'd noticed her of being more than a little flirty with. Sure enough, my car was in the driveway. His roommate let me in and I banged on his bedroom door. He answered in a bathrobe and she was passed out in his bed. I asked for my keys, which she tossed to me before rolling back over and going back to sleep. Told her we were done that afternoon. Honest to God, she was completely blindsided. I ran into her through mutual friends over the next year or so, and more than once heard her mention that I just randomly dumped her. I have truly never known a more delusional, self-centered, awful person in my life. Story 56. He told me I had put on weight during our relationship and that he wasn't attracted to me anymore. In fact, he added, my co-worker Beth's body type was more appealing to him. Beth happened to be anorexic and an obsessive runner who was not managing her eating disorder very well. I was maybe 115 pounds, 5 feet, 2 inches tall. Story 57. Positive tipping point. When I began daydreaming about coexisting with him, the mundane parts of living together, stepping on his socks in the hallway, looking for treats for him at the store to bring home and leave on the counter, knowing that he's only a room away if I need him, things like that. I'm truly excited for the days, weeks, years to come negative tipping point. When I dreaded seeing a text or call from him, two different relationships. Story 58. My ex had trouble going to sleep and would demand I lay perfectly still as soon as I got into bed. So I was afraid to shift or turn from the second I got into bed. Whatever position I initially lay down in, I had to stay in until she was asleep. One night, I carefully moved nigh hip to a more comfortable position, and she said in a deep and demanding voice, Don't. Move went on a couple more weeks, but that was the moment I had enough.